Welcome everyone to today's session. Thank you so much for joining us. I think we should begin. Uh, my name is Maureen Ochako. I'm the R2C program manager. We're delighted to have you here. So over to you, Hilda. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Hilda Orwa and I'm an assistant in the research to commercialization program. And I'll also be your host during uh, today's session. Um, just before you start, feel free to type in your name and where you're joining us from in the chat box. Okay, I can see Tim. Tim is joining us from Nairobi. Nice to meet you, Tim. Simon, Simon from Eldoret. Nice to meet you, Simon. Dr. Joyce from Kabarak University. Hello, Joyce. Rebecca joining us from Nairobi. Hello to Rebecca. Okay, uh, I believe we can start now. I'll go ahead and share my screen so we can begin the session. Okay, if you can share my screen, if you can see my screen. Um, yes, we can. You can put it on uh, slideshow mode. A slideshow at the top there. Top right, yeah. You see home insert, draw, design, transition, slideshow. The, slide, the next one, the next one slideshow. Then from the beginning, there you go. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, much better now. It's good. Okay, thank you so much, everyone, for joining the Financing Your Innovation webinar. Um, once again, my name is Hilda from Victoria Ventures, and I'm an assistant in the research to commercialization um program and um the research to commercialization program is an fcdo and risa funded uh, program our partners are the kenya national innovation agency whose mission is to develop and manage a dynamic national innovation system as well as victoria ventures which is a consulting management firm with a entrepreneurial um financing mission so um among the motivations that we had to have this um program was one to replicate the growth in innovation and um 
I'm very sorry. Sorry about that. I think I got a bit distracted. Our main motivation is to replicate the growth in innovation and technology to research based information and predominantly from a funding and commercialization perspective, as well as to ensure that all those brilliant researchers uh, don't end up in libraries, but rather get to the market and, and um, resolve societal pain points. Our two main objectives as well are to, um, our two main objectives are to strengthen the researchers' capacity by taking them through an accelerator program to prepare them for investment and commercialization, and also to strengthen uh, the participating institutions' technology and transfer capacity. We have, uh, we actually we achieve this through five pillars. Uh, one is the R2C accelerator program. We kicked off cohort two on Monday, um, cohort two ran from December of 2022 to June. So currently we are ushering in the cohort two. We also have the, the TOT training on R2C curriculum, which is a partnership between Mawazo Institute and the Technical University of Kenya. We also hold webinars on every second Thursday of the month, which is actually the webinar which you're in right now. You're free to invite your friends and your colleagues to join in. We often um, speak about topics that affect the pain points researchers face during their commercialization uh, journey. So um, we've actually had a few. Last week, we spoke about tipping negotiations in one's favor. So this week, we actually on financing your innovations. And during this session, we're going to have our moderator, Sonia Rasugu, who is our gender equity and social inclusion expert. Uh, I'll invite her to take over the session as we continue with the introductions via the chat box. Welcome, Sonia. Sonia, can we hear you or? Oh, you, we can't we see we can't seem to hear you, but we can see you. <laughs> okay, as we continue to see if we're able to resolve the technical hitch with uh, Sonia's mouthpiece. I'll uh, just jump in and maybe ask our great panelists to introduce themselves. And we'll start with Margaret. Kindly unmute, put your video and introduce yourself and tell us why you agreed, why you said yes to this <laughs> webinar on it, financing uh, for your innovation. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Maureen. And um, yeah, it's good to Over see to everyone. You. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Maureen. You can hear me loud and clear. Yes, loud and clear. All right, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, good morning, good evening. Some people are logging in from other places of the world. Uh, but yes, I'm Alda Margaret Kimani, very passionate about this topic because I believe that I'm grooming in innovators all over, uh, especially here in Kenya. And uh, yes, I'm an investment banker and I'm very keen on the innovations that come out of this space. Especially in Kenya, of course, uh, you know, home is always best and, and a home, we have to start with our home, our home own country. Uh, so I judge a lot of entrepreneurs. Uh, the last two years now, I'm an entrepreneur myself. So I've been doing a lot of judging competitions for the innovation space. I, I started in Nairobi Innovations, Innovation Week, where we worked very hard with the current CEO of, uh, you know, Kenya Innovation Authority. Um, and for me, I mean, I've been sitting on the other side of the coin, which is judging. I judge a lot of entrepreneurs, especially my sweet favorite part is women, youth, and uh, of course, PWDs, because we know that the work, a lot of work need to be done there. We are far from it. Um, we are far from inclusion, financial inclusion. And uh, one of the reasons that motivated me to leave commercial banks uh, to go back to investment banking is because I see a lot of these entrepreneurs, they have serious innovations they come to the commercial banks and we are not able to finance them 
And so we are looking for other solutions. I'll be sharing some of those things, what we are doing, even as venture capitalists. I also invest in small micro businesses that are solving world problems. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy to be here. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you on behalf of all the attendees. Uh, maybe we can do a, a bit of introduction from Professor Duncan. Uh, thank you very much. I am called uh, Duncan Buge. Uh, I work as an associate professor in the Department of Environmental and Systems Engineering at the University of Nairobi. But the reason I'm here is because our department is actively involved in innovation. And uh, we were lucky to have been part of the first cohort uh, of uh, innovator, innovators that are being incubated uh, through Victoria Ventures by the Kenya. So this is why I'm happy to be here today. And uh, as we go on, we'll learn more about our innovation. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Duncan. Like you have already mentioned, you are part of the, the cohort one, and we are obviously delighted to hear your journey. And and you know, for the panel, for the people who are joining us, just uh, we had a researcher that's Duncan, but also an ecosystem enabler who is Margaret, just to see if the two are speaking the same language when it comes to financing your innovation or financing for your innovation. So I think we can just go right into it. Uh, thank you again for joining us. So I think we'll go right into it and I'll start my questions and I'll just pick each and uh, whoever I feel like should be responding to a particular question. And just an opening remark that for the participants who are joining us, feel free to type your questions in the Q&A session and we'll answer them as they come through. All right, so I think our first question is uh, to Professor Duncan. What are some of the challenges that you have faced as you're trying to finance for your innovation, as you're trying to secure funding for your innovation? Duncan? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, maybe I can take a minute or so to say something about the innovation itself, that yes. it is uh, a grain dryer and storage all in one, which uses solar energy for drying as well as desiccant. So we call it hybrid desiccant solar dryer. And what it does is that uh, when you harvest your grain, you will put it inside the dryer and uh, that's all you do, put it inside the dryer after you sell it. And then uh, the drying process will take over. And once it's dry, you will close the lid and move the drying station to the next uh, container. So we believe it's cost effective. And uh, we believe that it is something that uh, farmers will find useful. So because we feel it is uh, an innovation that a lot of people can benefit from, uh especially given the fact that uh it reduces labor requirements which of course helps to address uh, the plight of rural people especially women because they don't have to labor a lot so we have been trying to get some funds uh to be able to bring it out to the market so people can be able to buy it but we discovered that uh, it is not an uh, uh, an easy process. It's actually a long journey because at one point we identified a strategic partner who was willing to take it out to market. But the, the length of time it takes to get it out, because first of all, you have to do preliminary discussions with them. And then uh, you have to sign an undisclosure agreement and all the other processes that go with the uh, licensing, the technology. And it took us almost eight months. And in those eight months, uh, during the, uh, somewhere along the line, one of the, one of our key, key contacts in that organization went on retirement. And, uh, but his, his uh, replacement, uh, was not so keen on drying anymore. Actually, he told us he's more interested in cold chain. So just because of the time, we were not able to close the deal. Uh, so that's one of the key challenges in securing funding, especially for innovation. It takes a long time. And in the process, organizational policies 
can change. But also, okay. the, mm -hmm. there, are also there are also other people who, who make calls, uh, even online, many organizations. And uh, we have tried a, a number of them uh, with uh, varying degrees of success. But what we have noted is that they are extremely specific in what they want. You know, uh, as a researcher, anytime we do uh, uh, the, the ordinary research that we do in our labs and so on, they usually target things like uh, uh, UN uh, uh, sustainable, uh, what do you call it? S SDGs. Yeah. yeah. SDGs, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so we research along those lines. We are trying to alleviate poverty. We are trying to support farmers. But when you come to call for supporting innovation, they specific, specifically mostly want digital innovation. And those are not necessarily aligned with the SDGs. Uh, and they also target very specific groups, like uh, a lot of them uh, target, they, they will say we want only innovators between 18 and 25 years old. So obviously, I'm almost more than twice that age. And so something like that, I will not benefit from. So these are some of the issues. And also, uh, the, as an innovator, uh, sometimes in the first meeting, they will ask you, uh, what is the value of your innovation? And sometimes you haven't gone through that. So these are some of the challenges that you have faced. And maybe I hand over back to you. Uh, Madam Maureen. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I, I think I'm hearing uh, a few of the things that are obvious. I can't repeat again everything that you've said, uh, but I'm hearing you talking about the duration from the time you start seeking for that financing to when it takes. It takes sometimes a lot of time. And then I think I've also heard you talking about the changes or restructuring as a company or even as an institution. So that could happen within your team as well as within the institution that you are set up. And sometimes also if the policy is not aligned or it changes, then again, you're in trouble. And I think uh, the other thing I had you mention was how you align to the funders or the financiers. So they, they need to be, you know, um, proper alignment for you to get that fund funding. And maybe I'll just now go to Margaret and ask you, you have been in this space, you have worked with Kenya, you have worked with innovators, uh, ladies as well as men. Uh, what do you feel are some of the challenges they face when it comes to financing for their innovation? Um, very good question. And, and Duncan, uh, very proud of your innovations. And uh, don't, don't, <laughs> you can't give up. So I hope by the end of this session, we'll find solutions for financing for your innovations. Uh, but straight to the question, so the, some of the challenges I see, and remember, the, the passion God, the gift God has given me is that I sit, I sit on both sides of the, you know, of the money, is a supply and there's a demand, yeah? Uh, and uh, yes, you're right, uh, Duncan, uh, Prof, that, uh, you know, a lot of times I feel that the requirements do not even match. Like, for example, Duncan is solving a problem. We are dealing with climate change. You're, you're, you're resolving the solar issue. You are also resolving the labor issue. You're reducing the cost of labor, you know, even the cost. I'm sure your product product is cheaper. So there, it's very clear that you're solving a problem, a problem. And these innovations should find the money because money is always sitting on this other side. Uh, and in between the money and the supply of the money is always the requirements. So the first uh, challenge that I see is obviously the, the, the crazy, um, can I say irrelevant or, um, requirements. Sometimes some of the requirements, obviously, let's be honest, uh, I'm sitting on the investment banking side and you know that venture capitalists or even angel investors, when we are investing our money, when people are investing their money, they have to uh, mitigate risk, if I can use that word. Yeah, They have to make sure that even commercial banks, let's be honest, we always make sure that the goal is to have those monies repaid and the funds must come back. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, usually, obviously, there's a risk when you take a risk for a new innovation that is has not been tested. So one, like I said, it's a requirement. Sometimes we are very exorbitant or sometimes they are not uh, relatable to the innovation. Secondly, I think Duncan has mentioned it pro uh, politely, is the, you know, the age. Like sometimes, uh, <laughs> 
funny enough, I sat in a, in a, one of the board in Cape Town two months ago, and we were talking about female, future females, some of the challenges. And by the way, it's funny because these challenges we are talking about in Kenya are faced everywhere, from Egypt to Ghana to everywhere. It's across. So we, I feel like it's about time we came up with solutions. Now, in that board, one of the reasons we were sitting fund managers, you know, VCs, and we were talking about why is it that, uh, you know, what Duncan has said, the money is always sitting here. And I'll give you an example. In Kenya right now, commercial banks are, are not lending to SMEs because there's so much risk. Inflation and recession has taken over, but is already happening now. And instead of uh, going to look for innovations like Duncan's, banks will usually prefer to put that money in a T-bond, treasury bill, or a T-bond. And uh, you know what the, the ripple effect of that, that money is not circulating in the economy and uh, the rest is, you know, the answer to that. So the other challenge I see is that I feel like maybe the engagement level might not be what we want to, to be at. Uh, maybe there are a few bureaucracies, and I'm probably talking not necessarily government institutions, a few bureaucracies that can be removed to ease innovation. And I think that's the role of uh, Kenya Innovation you know, uh, Authority, maybe to engage the, the people with the money. And, and one of the things we are doing, I think, since the last two, the, since last year, is we are saying, and I think that I don't talk about politics, but you know, even the current government is trying to do that. We no longer want to borrow money from outside. So we are saying Maureen with her one million, <laughs> Maureen, you should say amen. Maureen with her one million and my two shillings and Sonia's, uh, you know, uh, 50 shillings. Can we pull those funds and invest them in our own ecosystem innovators like Prof, you know? And this is something I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I've done a lot of research on it. I might not share in this call, but uh, I, I think time has come, time has come. And this is also in line with the African trade. Uh, time has come for us not to be looking in the East and the West, and I have nothing, they're all my friends. I mean, some of you know that I was in Wall Street for 10 years, but they're all my friends, but we are saying, can our funds from Kenya, because I can tell you, there are people sitting in this country with money, but there are people sitting with innovations on this other side. Can we match the two? So engagement is very key. Uh, Duncan has spoken to the last one, but I want to emphasize on the issue of sustainability. A lot of funds now are looking at uh, certain, I think you even brought it up, Sonia and, and Maureen, when you talked about gender sensitive, gender gender lens funding, for example, for the women, because that segment is far from it, very far. Uh, there's also the, you know, diversity. Some people are looking at the, you know, innovations that are solving the climate change, um, you know, monkey, which is a serious issue. Uh, so I, I feel like if we align, if we engage more, we will actually find that some of these innovations we can fund ourselves internally within Kenya. So yeah, I can go on, the list is long, uh, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually have a, a follow-up question on that. I think you've um, mentioned about the gender list, which, which is where really I was going to. So you've mentioned particularly when investment bankers or financiers are looking to fund, there are some limiting factors, right? And I think you've talked about um, the age, the riskiness of the, uh, you know of the in of the innovator i guess so i just want to <laughs> to hear your thoughts on do you feel now when you talk about not the age but female versus male do you feel any of this gender is disadvantaged when it comes to access to finance or is there uh, disparity yes when it comes to access yes. of finance Yes, and uh, by the way, because I'm very passionate about this agenda, I would want to base it on on numbers, not my feelings and my passion for you know the women that are, you know, the marginalized. Not just women, even men in some sectors they are marginalized, and we have to look at those. So gender, when I talk about, I'm actually a gender mainstreaming. Um, uh, I represent business engage in this region, in East African region. Um, I want to say that, you know, if I give you simple statistics in the commercial banking, we've done over the years, even IMF, International Mon you know, Monetary uh, Fund, they have done, World Bank did a research, and we see that globally, 78%, over 78% globally of consumer spending is controlled by women. But when you go to the women, remember women entrepreneurs, um, even when we look at Kenyan population, 51% is uh, women. But when you look at the, if you go to the numbers now in finance of how much money is going to the women-owned <clears throat> businesses, and remember women-owned businesses, unfortunately or fortunately, they start 
they usually start like can I call them kitchen kitchen businesses meaning like you know if it was prof they would start that drying concept in the kitchen in the balcony and so most women entrepreneurs are small so micro micro and small entrepreneurs so when you look at this number that women are controlling 78 percent but when you go to their SME side it, it's a no-brainer you can see that there's disparity there okay uh, secondly, is that uh, a lot of times, uh, and this information, you can get it from even Central Bank of Kenya, you'll see that women hardly default. If you see a woman defaulting on a loan, meaning if you've given money to a woman to an innovation, the numbers are there. Actually, even when you look at the bad book of uh, most commercial banks, if you look at the default rates, you'll see that very few females. If you see a female defaulting, she's put in a corner or maybe she lost her employment, she was unfairly or something happened or maybe, you know, uh, like things that we cannot have, like death and stuff. So women, and, and so I'm saying that most of the times, the reason you see funders asking for gender, you know, uh, you know, uh, sometimes they will leave and say, we want a woman entrepreneur or for to the disadvantage of Duncan, sometimes they'll say we want young entrepreneurs because we want to encourage uh, innovators. Young people also do not have collateral, yeah? Uh, and most women also usually don't have collateral. So that is where they are disadvantaged. So what, what we are actually looking at, and thank God for digitization and technology, we are looking at innovations that can use factoring. Yeah, factoring to price, uh, you know, to, to, to actually rate people's uh, credit, credibility or credit score. Uh, and I know these innovations are coming thanks to the digital uh, currency. Uh, I think many of us have been following the space of digital currency. Because if you start asking people for traditional collateral, there you will leave out people who are innovators. Um, so maybe the requirements, uh, the requirements can actually, we can do better on the requirements. And I've seen over the years, people are, you know, financials, even fintechs, uh, people like Safaricom, um, I don't want to get into the digital lending space um, agenda. It's not the topic of the day, but you know, we've seen some innovations that have come out. They might not, okay, be very cheap, but at least it, it's a, it's a, it's. I think it's a direction in the right uh, way. Um, and these are the things we are talking about. Also, maybe uh, the SACO movement. Uh, there's a group innovations uh, that you know, group funding, um, uh, powered by technology. That is obviously a, a, a way to go. But I want to finish by saying that the gender lens funding is a very huge topic. I cannot cover it today. But uh, most of the times we are saying as uh, venture capitalists and even investment banking, there are funds specifically set for those segments. Youths, uh, PWDs, by the way, let's not forget about them because they are highly marginalized when it comes to their innovations. Um, currently, by the way, I'm supporting an innovation that is, um, you know, the innovator is actually a visually impaired person. And we've been walking the journey, it's been very long, but we thank God. Um, you know, and, uh, and, and so those are, those are things that we must uh, actually follow. And maybe for Professor Duncan, for your innovation, I, I know there are other channels that you can go, including the traditional methods of financing, you know? Uh, the, the, there's the, I know people laugh about the table banking. I think if we must go to tab back to the table banking, like now we can call a few, um, you know, segments to support this inno innovation. If whatever it takes, what I'm saying is whatever it takes to get this financing done, to move the money from the supply demand side so that the, the money can go to the right innovations. Yeah, over back to you. <laughs> Thank you. I think you've even gone a step ahead to answer my next question on the WDs, but uh, let's hear from Dan. Can you have any reaction to what uh, Margaret is saying? And then I'll ask you a question, you know, most of the donors, financiers are also look, putting on the gender lens, the JC, gender equity, social inclusion. So as an innovator in your team or how are you integrating the JC lens? So first, if you have any reaction to what Margaret has said about, uh, yeah, she said a lot of things, maybe just uh, if you want to highlight one thing and then you talk about how you're aligning yourself with the JC narrative, Duncan. You're muted. Uh, sorry, I'll, I think I'll start maybe by giving uh, my experience as a lecturer for now 20 years at the university. What I've seen is that, uh, for example, in engineering, 
we don't admit uh, very many ladies. Uh, it, the numbers are very low as compared to the gentlemen that are admitted to this course. But uh, we have a few uh, professors in engineering who have been very passionate about mentorship. Uh, so, so they have been so uh, successful that at one time, uh, I'll give you uh, some numbers. Uh, we had a class of 50 uh, in, in, in our department, 50 uh, where about 40 of them were, were, were gentlemen and 10 were ladies. But at the end of the degree, when you we were awarding the degree, we had six first class. And of those six, five were ladies. So uh, mentorship is extremely important uh, at, at undergraduate level. So, and all, all of them have now gone on to masters and some even are starting PhD right now. But there's a challenge uh, because a lot of the professors at the university rely on master students for research because most of our innovations are out of uh, research that we have done. Uh, so what you find at the uh, master's level, for a long time, as, uh, as I was growing up in the university, I wondered why the completion rate of ladies at master's level was very low. Uh, or they take a proportionately longer to finish, at least from my observation, I don't have any data here on my fingertips. And then I realized that uh, this is the time that these ladies are actually getting into family life. And some, some of them would suddenly just switch off and I would look for them and they would, I, I would not find them. Then uh, two years down the road, they would come, you know, I would like to continue. And ask, where have you been? Then one of them told me very plainly that I was starting a family and now I have a baby and she's old enough. Now I can continue with my study. And it lit a, a bulb in my head because this is something that was not uh, very clear to me in the beginning. I, I was treating them equally, you know, the, the way you, you just I have a student, the semester ends at this time, we need to do exams, now you need to write your proposal. And now with that realization, I have to be more flexible, uh, especially knowing that I have money from a donor who needs results. I've committed this student to this project. <laughs> and the student is going to set a family. <laughs> so these are really uh, difficult challenges, but I have learned to understand. And I am not, I, 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 I would be, at first I used to feel embarrassed sort of to go and tell the funny agency that my student went to start a family. But this is something somebody must do. We must have a family. We must have baby for 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 us to continue being as human beings. So I would write and say, fine. Uh, we have a delay, but I've talked to the candidate. Uh, the candidate is going to come back in six months to continue because he's on maternity leave. And to my shock, they understand, and 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 they would even give us extension on that basis. So uh, these are these are uh, because for us, I wouldn't. Like in our department, we have 10 projects running and more, and I wouldn't be able to do them myself. But these are some of the things that we need to learn. And, and I, don't, I don't know whether all my colleagues are alive to some of these realities. And these are some of the things that we need to emphasize our, uh, some of our colleagues uh, to realize. But having said that, of course, uh, I, I know that uh, in this case, some people would give up and say, no, I, me, I don't want to involve ladies. But you see, we must involve ladies because first it's in our constitution to have the one card gender rule. I would imagine if, uh, if you looked at my CV and I've supervised uh, 30 students for masters and PhD and none of them was a lady, then there would be a problem with me. <laughs> it would be. <laughs> so, uh, the, so we must do it and we must uh, be conscious about it. Uh, but also, there are many ways in a project that, uh, because a project has got its own stages. 
first and foremost, uh, and different uh, players, because you can have the PI, you have the employees or the implementers, uh, we also have financiers, and we also have beneficiaries. So uh, there are, I think, uh, in, in terms of project implementation, as uh, people who are implementing projects and doing innovation, we need to look at the project cycle and see uh, at what, uh, make sure that at every stage we are involving uh, the lady. And we are able, if somebody asks me, for example, with my granary, how does it uh, help to promote inclusion? I would say, well, uh, in the month of September, those ladies who come from the maize growing area have to carry maize back and forth from the house. But this technology at least uh, reduces that kind of gradual. So uh, th these are some of the, the ways we are trying to, to make sure Sorry that, uh, that that we implement our project. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I am seeing the questions are coming thick and fast, so I'll also just let you and uh, Margaret read to the questions, and then you'll be responding them as we proceed. But I was seeing Margaret ag agreeing vehemently with what you're saying. <laughs> Do you want to say something before I go to the yeah, next question? Yeah, I wanted to say uh, that you see that's why gender mainstreaming. Uh, it should be almost like a mandatory thing for every, every one of us to do, whether you're a small SME. Um, I think some of you have seen that I'm running my own consulting firm, Kabute Global. And gender mainstreaming, whether you're a small uh, SME, whether you're a, a huge institution like University of Nairobi, whether you're, it has to start with the workplace, it has to go to the community, and then it has to also go into the you know business marketplace. Um, I think you said something very powerful about, uh, you know, most most funders actually, it, I think that transparency is always very key. And when they see that you have a gender lens, because can I explain gender lens? Maybe it sounds very complicated, but gender lens is, is actually um, just look, putting gender in what you do. And sometimes, by the way, guys, gender lens is not always about the woman. It's about also looking at the men proportionate. Uh, proportionately and saying, oh, here yeah, we've actually left out the men and they can add value. Uh, one of the things I think to sum up what uh, Prof has said is that you find that uh, companies that are diverse, whether it's at the board level, companies that have both male and, 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 and females um, contributing equally, you'll find that, like for us, I'm sure the women here will agree. Women, we are very detailed. Women, we are very meticulous. And you find, this is data, by the way, it was a research done by ZPWC or um, McKinsey. And, uh, you know, this research, and this is research, research based again. Uh, people, they found that companies that, that have that diversity, even at the board level, at the, you know, junior level, you find that the output, the production, the productivity is always high. So even for the university, I, I, I hope, I think you've put an action point there that uh, most universities, as you're doing this research project, please disclose that you have females that have gone to maternity and you know tweak, tweak around it. It's the same thing we tell companies. I was very proud to champion something at uh, my last employment before I went on my own. Uh, you know, we do gender lens, you know, even procurement. How much of your procurement are you? It also speaks to funds. Women are innovating these things, but how much of the business are we giving to them? Because by the way, uh, Prof, did you know that uh, the best source of financing, and this is something I know I'll mention at the end, the best source of financing is being able to sell your innovation, meaning that you're making sales. And if you're making enough sales, then you don't need no funder. <laughs> you don't need no finances. So, so I feel that if women actually, and that's why for me, uh, one of the last assignments I did, it took me a whole year to get an approval from the board at uh, State Bank of Mauritius, uh, is I told the board, guys, look, to only 2% of our procurement then was going to women. I don't know if it's moved to 3% now that I've left the last two years, but I'm very proud to see that that, that project go on. Even now, if they you know, I, I still kind of like, you know, uh, keep in touch with some of the women who have gotten procurement, but that's where it starts. Uh, and again, uh, the last co uh, comment will be women in STEM. We need to encourage more women in STEM, engineering, science, the future of work, guys, I cannot emphasize enough. The future of work is gonna change so much, even by the end of the year. So our women need to be, and that's why I'm starting an innovation hub myself, by the way, guys, in Kajiado. We're investing ourselves small little, 
you know, cents and shillings. Uh, and we are cutting a bit of our, um, we are giving out a little bit of our space to start an innovation hub because, in a, you know, the Maasai community has been very heavy in my heart. The pastoralist community, actually, of course, majority of them are Maasai. They have never seen a smartphone, leave alone a laptop, you know? And for me, I feel like that is margin that is the serious marginalization because those kids, they are like 20 years behind and someone has to, you know, bring them up. And it's not about the woman, the girl child. It's also the boy child. All those kids have never seen a computer and we have to change this narrative. So let's start these innovations ourselves and fund them ourselves small. It does, you don't have to have billions and millions of shillings to start like me, you know? And, and I always believe that when you have, when God has given you a good vision, like the innovation God has given you, Duncan, uh, the, the funds will always come. I'm never worried about, you know, the funds will come. Talk to a few people, you know. Yeah, uh, back to you, um, Maureen. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I think just to remind us that uh, we are having a finance, our topic today is financing your innovation agenda lens. So allow me to just go into the questions that have been brought up and I'll call you and uh, Duncan to respond to them. I think the first question which I'm requesting uh, Margaret to respond to, mm. can blended finance be used to finance research-based innovation? Perhaps this can add a layer of finance to reduce risk, uh, Margaret? Yeah, very good question. I think it's come from Michael. Yeah, great, great to see you, Michael, here. And uh, yeah, I, I honestly feel that uh, this this has worked in certain markets. Uh, in Kenya, it's can I just say it's early days because I think majority of the audience here are in Kenya. But yes, I would say that yes, this is a very this can actually add uh, a, another way of looking at reducing mitigating risk for the funders uh, for the people with the money. Uh, and uh, we are actually looking into it. But for me, I would want blended finance. Uh, that is powered by technology. That is my personal take. Powered by technology. You can do blended finance, but let it be heavily powered by technology, meaning risk factoring, for example, is something we are looking into. Uh, yeah, so that, that, that would be my short answer. Okay, thank you very much. I think there's another question here for Dan Khan. Uh, what has been your experience in obtaining innovation grants? Uh, You're thank muted. you. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the this uh, I would look at grants, uh, the upstream and the downstream. The upstream for me has been a bit uh, easier because I think uh, that's what I was trained to do, and uh, because uh, and there are calls for proposals, and I think even at master's level we are trained to write proposals. For, for looking for grants to do research. That is that that has been a good experience for me. Uh, at first, of course, because uh, as time goes on, it, it, it may, may become a little uh, difficult before you are you before, before you get the skill of proposal writing, but that can be the, uh, hard over time. The problem is the downstream. After you have your innovation, you have a product that you want to bring to market. Now you have to ask all the difficult questions because this is something that is so far uh, was not very aggressively thought, uh, at least when I was a student. It's only now uh, that we are taking the issue of entrepreneurship and, uh, and, and commercialization more seriously as a country. So you find that uh, there the were some of us who are a, a little uh, more elderly than uh, in the system have a, have a challenge trying to uh, commercialize. Perhaps for the young people, it's easy to make spin offs and startups and so on, but uh, it's not so for the majority of the people, especially the university researchers. Uh, so that, that is the picture. The, the, the active funding to get the knowledge and to develop the product. That is and the established funders. This other side uh, is now that I'm beginning to learn that there are angel investors, different kind of investors who are willing to, to finance. And, and now we have to start to learn uh, how they operate and so on. Uh, but I believe that in time, we'll also catch up. Thank you. 
Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'll read another question. Um, this is from Simon Jr. Um, he says, and I'll write funding grants for innovation. What are some of the common requirements? that one needs to know before they can, they can acquire funding. So maybe Duncan, you can talk from a practitioner, practici um, a researcher seeking for financing. And Margaret, you can talk from the other side where you are the one giving the funds. What are some of the requirements that uh, you are looking out for? Uh, Margaret? Sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Just repeat that, I had a issue on my end. Okay, I think uh, well, maybe we can have Dan kind of respond to, I think the question is from Simon. I'll just read it, it's in the Q&A section. Uh, which bodies in Kenya provide funding and grants for innovations? And what are some of the requirements or procedure that one needs to know before acquiring funding? So I was asking you to speak from an enablers, the one who's giving the financing, and then maybe Dan can, can speak on what are some of the requirements or procedures that uh, one needs to follow? when they're looking to find out, to get financing for the innovation. And maybe we can start, start with Duncan and then uh, back to you, Margaret. Well, uh, Simon, I must say that funding, I think uh, for, especially for uh, research, what I was calling the app, there is so much funding all over the world. The only thing is, I think different funding organizations are motivated differently. And they, for this reason, they target different uh, players. You will find organizations that will only give funding to community-based organizations. And uh, if you apply as university, <laughs> they'll politely tell you that you don't qualify. Uh, some will only give NGOs. Others will give private businesses. And so I, I, I think uh, there are many organizations, but Perhaps one needs to know, and I think these are services that somebody like Maureen, uh, she's not saying, but I think she's <laughs> in, in the space where they operate. They have a lot of these uh, organizations. They, they have a lot of links and websites. Uh, I've attended a lot of the training where they can direct you to the website where you find a long list of these funding agencies. And I know, of course, through our different university systems, every week they post uh, calls for proposals. So these are there. Now, when it comes to writing proposals, it's just good to read the guidelines of the of what they want. Because, uh, like the other day, I, I was at a workshop where we were trying to analyze the different funding agencies, and we found that funding agencies in America only require you to write no more than three pages. But the ones of EU will require you to write maybe uh, 50 pages or so. So, uh, and you and all of them have different techniques. It doesn't mean that if it is three pages, it is easy because the 50 pages that you write for the other, you have now to, uh, you know, compress it in, in, into, into three pages. So you just need to go into, into the detail and look at what they want and make sure that you meet all the requirements. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Maybe I can also, oh, are you ready, Margaret, now? You're good? Yeah, yeah, I'm good, I'm oh. good. Um, I, I actually need to jump into another session, so I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. Now, I um, the question is a very good, valid question. I think you've asked about the what we are doing, you know, to change the, some of those requirements, uh, or you can repeat the question. I'm trying to find it on the chart. Uh, maybe you can rephrase the question. It's I okay. Don't quite I think I, I, yeah. I can respond to the question uh, because okay. we only have 10 what? minutes. No, right? it's okay. Just ask I the think... question. Very okay. Quick. Very quick. Um, let me just get it. I think they were asking where can one get financing? Okay, uh, good. good. And right. then the other question. Um, okay, yeah, sure. Okay, can go for it. so I'll respond very briefly. Uh, yeah, the finances are there depending on the category. And I'll tell you, for example, for women, there are women funds uh, that are segregated here in Kenya for women. Uh, for youth, you know, there's a youth fund. Um, you know, I know in the past they've had very many challenges. 
but then current administration, they are really looking to, um, you know, streamlining that. Now for someone like Duncan, who is a very honorable professor, his age limit, he can look at um, other channels, um, you know, that are out there, but it's true that some of these requirements are out of this crazy requirement. Very, very, uh, in fact, I, I was sitting with one of the development uh, organizations. Um, you know, we went to Nakuru the other time and we were having a meeting. We were telling them, listen, the amount of effort our innovators, in fact, we were, I'm in the group of uh, countrywide innovation hubs uh, because I'm starting a hub in Kajiado. And we were telling them, listen, the amount of time you expect me, even the effort, the energy, to put up our uh, proposal is actually cost benefit analysis, we, we say in finance. It is not worth my time, even the money, to be honest, uh, with a lot of respect. And that is why my point at the beginning was very, very key, very key. Guys, we need to start thinking about us funding our own innovations locally. Whatever the method we have to use, if we have to sign NDAs, uh, yeah, yeah, so, so yes. Uh, but there are sources, I, the list is too long. There are even external funders. Um, maybe I can engage and I can share a few links after this because of time. Over to you, Maureen. All right, thank you. I think I just wanted to respond to the same question and just highlight a few of the people who are funding research-based innovation. Of course, the first one is Kenya, Kenya National Innovation mm. Agency. We have KIRDI, uh, Kenya Industrial Research Institute. We have the KCCI, Kenya Climate um, Kenya Climate Innovation uh, something. Central and Strathmore, yes. Yes, then we have yes. Strathmore. And then when it comes to a bit to the private sector, we have Safaricom. Uh, we have a couple of angel networks in the country who would be looking, mm -hmm. who are actually looking to fund innovations. Uh, for example, Victoria Ventures. Victoria we also Ventures. run. Uh, yes. Exactly. How are we forgetting ourselves? Uh, we run uh, an angel, uh, angel of business network, Viban. And we have Growth Africa who are keen to support health sector. Um, we have the various, um, there's a Chandaria, there's, I think we have Chandaria, and we also have MasterCard who are very uh, interested and big in the market to fund innovations. And I forgot to mention NRF, that's of course the National Research, Research, Research Fund, National, National Research Fund, now I'm running, I'm chasing against time. All right, uh, I think uh, Michael will also be responding to the, some of the questions that are happening in the chat. But allow me to go to our last question for both panelists. Um, I think the first question for you, Margaret, is uh, what are some of the existing opportunities that are in the market for women, for people with PWDs, and just the whole Jesse lens? What are some of the interesting, exciting opportunities that researchers in these spaces uh, can take and benefit from? Okay, very good question. And um, yeah, uh, maybe I'll mention the one that I feel that people are not aware of um, is the AGPO. <laughs> I don't know if uh, it's a very long term, but you can Google after this. AGPO is uh, access to government procurement, uh, you know, opportunities for the marginalized sector, which is women, PWDs, and of course the youth. Um, and, you know, as a parastatus, government has actually set aside, it's actually happening, I know they are far from it, they've set aside 30% of all their budget. Uh, and as you know, right now, the current administration, I don't talk about politics, but, uh, you know, um, the current administration is trying to digitize a lot of uh, things. They are also looking at the climate smart stuff, uh, innovations like the one Duncan has. So if we engage some of these organizations with the right networks, I think someone talked about mentorship. If you have the right networks and it's not about knowing people, it's about walking to some of these offices. You've given a very good example of Kirdi. Uh, if you go to some of these offices, um, you know, you'll be able to get, uh, you know, such opportunities procure with them, be listed in their procurement. Of course, you'll have to have to uh, an AGPO certificate, but maybe for like Duncan's uh, solution, not necessarily, there's still a provision for that. Other existing spaces is I find in the digital space, there's a lot of innovations coming out, um, even digitization of processes. So, and that's why we are saying, uh, you know, I think STEM courses is something we need to even tell our grandkids and our kids to look into. Um, other things is uh, non-traditional methods of financing. Uh, now, right now, I hope you guys know that there are smart contracts, even on the trade side, African trade. 
African trade is something that all of us, whether we like it or not, we keep saying that after COVID, we are running a real global economy. But I think now we need to actualize it. And our African trade has become a very big deal. It was actualized, uh, implemented maybe not too long ago. But all of us must think how we trade with each other amongst, you know, even with East Africa. Um, uh, though let me stop there because of time. But uh, I think after this, we can compile something, a list of things and, and share with the audience. Thank you so much, Maureen. OK, I think that's, um, yeah, that sounds uh, ideal. We'll just get all the email addresses and we'll share the links. I'm seeing someone is also asking for the links of the ones that I have spoken about. And so maybe a last question uh, for you before we do the parting shots uh, for Duncan. Uh, what are some practical approaches that you can recommend uh, to, I think you have already responded to this. Uh, let me see, maybe I can just give you each a minute to do your parting shot before we thank you for attending the session. Uh, well, I can, I can, I can start. I, I think I would like to say that uh, in our innovation endeavors, I would like to urge uh, the people listening that the university universities can be a very good focal point for assisting to at least develop some of the technology. So please do not be afraid to come. Be like the farmer, one of uh, one farmer who came to us, and now we are working with them at least to get the, the innovation to a good level technologically, then they can be incubated now for commercialization by other people. Thank you. All right, I'm seeing there's another question before I let you do your parting shot, uh, Margaret. I think there was a question from Paris. Does one's, one's innovation also mean a, a research proposal? Allow me to ask Duncan to respond and then I'll just add on to it and then we do the closing remarks. Okay. So, the, uh, Duncan, the question is, does one innovation also mean research proposal? I know you are, you can respond to that. Yeah, of course, you know, uh, mm. any innovation can always be improved. Yes. And, and uh, it's ongoing research. So this is mm. why I'm adding that if, if, if we can work, because the universities have been, are now trying to, to implement their outreach program to work with innovators, to work with farmers, to work with everybody, then uh, we are able to grow them. We will not find you the funders, for example. Victoria Ventures will find you the funding agency. But at least from the technological side, I think we can we can support uh, the innovators in this way. Thank you very much. Awesome. All right, thank you. There's another comment that I would like to read, and then we do your closing remarks, if that's OK. okay. Uh, is there a is there a mechanism, this is from Amnesty, is there a mechanism to link the innovators and funders locally? And then she gives a comment to say, we need to change our mindset from thinking funds can only be from international or other countries to support our innovators. What can be done to build local trust to link innovators with local funders? So maybe I'll just respond to that to say that even as R2C for the program, we are heavily relying on our local partners and they are actually even philanthropists that, that are in mm. Kenya, mm. for example, Chavaria, and are mm. willing to support uh, SMEs and innovations. So yes, um, yeah, I agree with you. And I think also Margaret had mentioned earlier that we need to start at home, charity begins at home. So over to you, Margaret, to do uh, your part of thought. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I was in my Yeah, I know I can go on and on and on. This is something close to my heart. Now, uh, we need as innovators, including myself, my daughter is manufacturing honey, and Kirudi has been supportive. She's incubated there. She's only nine. So this is to say that when you come up with your innovation, I hope, I know it's expensive. It's They are trying to discount it. Please patent your innovation. We've seen scenarios, I, I know we've not discussed it here. We've seen scenarios where people, especially on the research innovation side, People take this idea, even on fintechs are doing that. Uh, there are some that have been accused of that. Please protect your innovation. Secondly, do not give up with your innovation, even if the funds do not come, because if you're passionate and you must keep going and keep talking to more people. And I think Maureen, you've closed my parting final remark on, yes, we are doing such forums to actually open up these opportunities, create awareness of the opportunities. Local is the way to go, guys. Local funding is what 
Somebody has said it in the in the chat. I just read it that yes, this mind mind shift has to happen. Otherwise, we cannot be writing you for two months. You're writing a proposal. You go and you don't even qualify because the requirements are too. You know, there's no offense. We still need the international funders, but uh, I think if we can focus on home and localize even the requirements so that they are relevant. Um, thank you so much for having me. Uh, big shout out to Michael for reaching out and uh, Victoria Ventures. I see us working together uh, and uh, Kabute Global Consulting. And uh, yeah, we love doing this. And by the way, we are supporting so many. Sometimes you, the support you need, I'm sure Prof, you'll agree. It's not always the money. Sometimes I just need a linkage as an innovator, maybe to Maureen, who is sitting in Victoria Ventures. So sometimes it's not always the money. Mentorship is key. And these cohorts are very powerful because they also teach you how to sell your products. Um, so let's keep going, doing it and uh, let's empower our, let's finance our innovations. And even the people who are logging in, maybe you have a few more shillings that you could invest and get a higher return with the dryer that uh, Duncan is, uh, you know, has innovated, you know, <laughs> at your University of Nairobi. So why not support our own? Yeah, because by the way, machinery is a big, I'm a farmer, I know. Machinery is a big headache here in Kenya. So let, let's support our local innovation so that we don't need to import these machines from elsewhere. Yeah, Asante. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. I think in true Harambe spirit, uh, we agree because, uh, you know, we have the chamas and we can do this together. So thank you very much. I think I'll appreciate both our panelists. Uh, we, can, uh, we can probably just clap uh, and just to, to say that we are happy that you're able to join us. You can clap or you can do a thumbs up, you know, just to encourage them that we have learned a bit from them. We have had a good interaction. And from me also to say to you, thank you very, very much. And also the participants, we couldn't have done this without you. If you if, if there are no participants, believe you me, we would have stopped the webinar. So mm. also appreciate yourselves. Uh, thank you very, mm. very much. And remember, we have these webinars every third Thursday of every month. On mm. third Thursday of every month from 11 to 12 p.m. Next month, we're talking about business model Canva. So I hope awesome. to see you, most of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a lovely day, everyone. Thank you, thank you guys for attending. Maureen, the next one should be a physical one, right? <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> we'll see about that. Anyway, have a good day, guys. I have to run to another session with Carrie. So thank you, God bless. Okay. Thank I'll you very you. much. I'll, right. Bye -bye. I'll close the session soon. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs>